Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow 33 bringing you a match, an exhibition match between Jay Raccoon and Vikran. We see Jay Raccoon right now just choosing his race. He has decided to play Grekum, and Vikran is on the top right corner. He is also playing Grekum, so it's going to be a Grekum Mirror match this time. This is on Mantanier Transfer. This is a very new map. It's one that I haven't really shown off much, so I'm just going to show it here a bit. So, both players are likely to be going for economic starts. We don't have to worry what they're, do what they're doing. Very unlikely going to go for anything more complex than that. So, onto the map. Both players start out rather elevated area at the corners of the map with six LC and four QP boxes each. There's a nearby expansion with th three LC and three QP boxes each. That's buildable space there. Then there's a bunch of buildable space in the middle with a nice little, basically, the transit, the station. The reason that's called Mantanier Transfer is the transfer station for the, supposed to be the pipes and... The way the game, the whole game lore is, there is this planet called Haven, which is basically this big mining colony in this system, and they have a bunch of transit tubes for people. And this is supposed to be a transfer station. Anyway, there's another expansion in the bottom and top with 3LC and 3QP as well. And there's expansions on the corners that have much more QP and much more LC, but 6LC, 4QP, and top left, bottom right corners. You notice both this expansion and the natural expansion have the boxes spread out, you can put RPs in the middle of boxes and very quickly switch between what type of resource they are mining, rather than having to move them. And this is something that some people asked me, and one of the other map makers does this, so I figured it would be an interesting idea to try out. Anyway, Jericoon getting he's getting eight RPs on LC, while Vikran is about a minute down from there. He is getting standard RPs, he hasn't moved beyond figuring out what he's gonna get, except he is getting an extra QP very early on. This is interesting. I'm not sure why he's going for that. Normally he will go full on LC because that allows him to build RPs from RP. Basically the RPs will allow him to build more RPs. So it's rather unusual to see him do that. J Raccoon on the other hand, like I said, is going full LC right now. He has 8 on LC, he's getting a full triad, and he is now moving... No, he is not doing anything with this triad. Sorry, I thought he was moving the triad, but that was just... No, he is moving the triad. He's pausing though. So it's not really... he'll worry about what he's doing once he, once he resumes playing. Vigran, on the other hand, has moved his triad down. He's moving it down to his natural expansion, or sort of the path between his natural and main. He is not quite in the natural expansion, but he is putting some RPs there. So, definitely moving out. This is nice to see. I do like the fact that he is making use of the bases. I noticed on this map, in particular playing it myself, that there's a lot more incentive to go to this expansion here. It's not... it's actually a nice little position for Grekum. They can easily move their triad and expand there, but it's also close enough that it offers some incentive not to just expand entirely in the main base, unlike, say, Cordova, which pretty much incentivizes move, staying inside the main base, not moving at all, moving later on in the match when you actually have a full base saturation in your main. Jericoon, however, is going for full base satur saturation in his main. He is not going for his natural quite yet. He is also getting advanced structures at the 244 mark. While Vikran has not even gotten a reef by the 153 mark, he hasn't really moved past this point. He has gotten a one bit of production beyond this, but not... No, it's just the RPs that he's building. So yeah, he has not actually built up anything other than RPs. He is expanding a lot more than J Raccoon is. So J Raccoon is going to be in a slightly better spot economically and technologically at this point. Though Vikran might be going... Looks like he is moving his Arcticus forward. He's also moving his, tri, his duo forward. So he's probably going for some Octos, early Octos, possibly just trying to expand around, maybe going for a small rush with his Octos. But he's definitely pushing forward with those Octos, trying to get what he can, or, sorry, pushing forward with the, tri the duo that will allow him to make Octos, which allows for RPs and everything. So it looks like he's going for the south base. Likely will start to build Octos, probably to attack, but maybe to expand. Though that is more J Raccoon Terra. That's more an expansion that J Raccoon can easily get. That's likely to be one that J Raccoon will go for first. And he is, in fact, sending some Octos down just to scout out. He isn't sending them to build any RPs yet. He is just sending them out. Looks like he's going for... He's going towards the central expansion, he's probably just double checking to figure out where Vikran is going himself. And now Jericoon is aspired, the 320 mark, so Jericoon is definitely pushing heavily for air. Vikran has jumped ahead of the 404 mark. He is building RPs, but the Octo from Jericoon is hit, has seen his tried, or his duo rather. It is going to be destroyed, but Jericoon does know what's going on. He knows that Vikran is expanding towards the bottom, or intending to expand towards the bottom. Whether he'll actually stay doing that is yet to be seen, but he is currently intending to do so. He has another couple minutes, or a couple meta minutes to change this. And 
another RP coming up. So Jericho definitely is focusing more on expanding this main base. Vikarin, I believe, has fewer RPs than... Yeah, Vikarin has fewer RPs than J-Raccoon. Jericho is definitely focusing more on building RPs. Vikarin is probably... Like I said, probably going more towards a bit of a rush. Jericho, obviously having seen it, means that he can stop it in advance. Though he is pulling back the officer that was used to scout, so it's not going to die. Still, Jericho is fully aware that Vikarin is likely planning to go for... No, he is actually counter... No, he's counterattacking with two Octos. And he may be building more, although he does aspire, so I wouldn't be surprised if he started building once he gets the resources for it. Because he doesn't have a whole lot of resources. Vikarin has more resources, but fewer resource processors. He's not spending as much as Jericoon is. So Jericoon could get a bunch of Octos and Faros and use them to just try to attack this duo. Forcing Vikarin to push back. Although Vikarin is not that well defended beyond this try. If he... Yeah, if he loses this duo, Jericoon would have an easy time getting through. Of course, the hard part is getting through this duo. And Octos being built for RPs are not going to be really effective targets. Jericoon is working around that. He makes sure that the Octos are not getting distracted by Vikarin's Octos turning into RPs. And more Octos will be... Oh, these Octos that came up before. So Jericoon is just focusing on this point in time. Probably trying to push his... No, he doesn't need to be focusing that heavily on reordering this point in time. He is attacking a bit earlier than he was before. Just trying to get the Octos... No, not even get the Octos before they come out of Priest. Actually, going straight for that Faro. But it won't be enough. The Octos that were just built will be able to defend that Faro. It would be a good idea if he had done that right as those Octos were trying to build RPs. He is, however, building a dome with one of the Octos. Actually, with both the Octos. Vigoran's Octos do not see the dome. One of them is getting attacked heavily. It is actually going to progen mode, so more Octos are being built. So this Octo had seen it, but it is going to progen mode. Beam is also being upgraded. This is a bad idea. Beam should not be upgraded right now, and this, this is a very clutch situation. He just needs more dome fire. The beam itself won't be very useful yet. The energy isn't there yet. And Jericho should also be starting to build up some air units. He is macroing a bit towards the future, which is good to see. Vikram, on the other hand, is focused more on this unplayable pass section. He does have his triad rally towards J. Raccoon's main. So Vikran does have much more map presence. He does have, like I said, more territory that's kind of trying to claim, but he's also a bit more spread out. Like I said, though, he does have more resources. Not He hasn't spent as much. He does have more resources. He does have a reef now. He does have advanced structures research, but he doesn't have any spires built up yet. And here we see the domes have lost the ability to actually hit anything because they're out of range. Although, they will be able... To, one of them is moving to, closer towards the main... Sorry, sorry closer towards the triad. And Vikarin is... Oh, there's research going on. It sounded like it. But, oh, right. That's the domes. So, the domes... Nice harassment there, but Vikarin is just ignoring that entirely. He's decided to send an Octo to the main base, attacking this Spire, and Jericoon has not yet used the Spire. I'm very surprised he has not built anything with the Spire yet. He's building some Seppies to block off the Octos. I'm not sure why he's going for Seppies specifically. Maybe he's planning on going for some reefs to help heal up, but no, he should have been going for Faro Pods a couple minutes ago. Now it's the only unplayable past. I mean, this is right at the edge of the un of the playable past, so we can't really do this. And now that now we see that we have the Faro and Seppi moving away from the domes, putting themselves in a great position to start building up at the 618 mark. J Raccoon is about half a minute behind from here, and he's he's uprooted his units. He's using them to attack directly, and they have. Managed to kill the Octos. Now would be a great time to start killing. And J Raccoon actually has to worry about, about Vikarin chronoporting. He is, in fact, chronoporting back a couple of Octos. He has chronoported back a couple of Octos. I don't think he's using them to attack with, though, but he is chronoporting them back. And that is going to be a bit of an issue. So J Raccoon is not safe anymore. Vikarin does have chronoporting, and he is definitely rushing with that chronoporting. J Raccoon getting far apart, however, which could be useful. He The chronoport departure has actually fallen off the timeline completely. Vikarin has aborted that chronoport departure. It looks like... Whoa, where did Vikarin's units go? See, there's two Octos that came back in the past, but it looks like... Check from Jerrican's point of view... No, Vikarin apparently has... Lost his duo. See, yeah, Vikarin has lost the duo. It looks like he probably lost it to the dome. And... Or he's just been chronoporting it back, but it doesn't look like he's actually chronoporting it back. Double check, though. It... It's quite possible that Vikran has simply moved his duo, but I don't see it around here anywhere. No, he did in fact lose the duo to the domes. The two domes that moved in destroyed the Faro and Seppi, so Vikran is in a really bad position right now. Jericun is in a perfect position to start attacking and just destroy Vikran. He also is getting chronoporting of his own, so both players will have chronoporting very shortly. Looks like about another 10 seconds, then chronoporting will be available for J Raccoon. Vikran does have a few more resources, but he doesn't have a triad right now, and. Looks like his Arcticus is right in the middle. And yeah, Jericoon. Looks like Jericoon has won. So that was a really quick game. 
Very interesting, very interesting to see that Octo Rush, though, the Octo Attack that Vikram was going for. Now, like I said, it's a Chronoboard Octo Attack, which ultimately didn't do anything, but still a pretty neat idea, despite the fact that, you know, ultimately it was for nothing. Because, like I said, the Octo... The Octo being Chronoboard back ultimately didn't actually get Chronoboard back. So, yeah, that is... Although Vikran looks like he's trying to chronoport some stuff back, some more units back to attack. So Vikran has not actually thrown in the towel quite yet. He is trying to chronoport back to Octos and use them to attack. Possibly trying to permaclone some Octos to deal extra damage. And really start damaging Vikran's base. However, the problem is that Vikran... Sorry, Jer Jerokin's base. The problem is that Vikran didn't actually... Well, he lost the Octo and Seppi later on, so I don't really know how he's going to possibly permaclone. I think he... He may have a chance, though. It's a small chance he will be able to permaclone, but he won't be able to permaclone the Octo and the... F or, sorry, the Sepi and the Faro. He is working on it, though. He's at least or working on on the chronocloning of Octos. I know, this is when the Faro and, and Sepi came in and will be destroyed. There, It is the unplayable past. Vikran is not able to chronoport back. He will be able to permaclone those Octos, so that will ultimately happen. I mean, it's a bit of an ontological paradox there, but yeah, those Octos... There are a couple Octos that were chronoported back that are permacloned, however, they ultimately died. So it makes... It makes no difference, really, ultimately. Vikran, nice little strategy, but... It looks like there's really no way that... They... That it can do anything right now. Vikran does not have anything to work with. He has some resources, he could actually build an Octo and Faros and such, but... J Raccoon now has enough units to just sweep whenever he feels like it. He has the Faro, Faro pods and everything. Both players are just sitting around chatting, though, so it's not going to do much good. And here we are. We have the one of the fire pods is being chronoported back, and it will probably end up attacking. Just, just trying to sweep through, attack everything, because that is really the best thing for Jericho to do right now, or, or not. Looks like no, the fire pod is just chronoporting back. Jericho, neither player really cares, honestly, at this point. Jericho has pretty much won. Vikran, however, is. Moving his Articus a bit, and he will be able to rebuild the Triad if he wants to. And he does have weaponry as well, so he hasn't thrown... Like I said, he has not thrown in the towel. Jericho really shouldn't be acting like the towel has been thrown in on this one. Vikran still has a couple Octos. He still can do stuff, and Jericho can't just get lazy right now. He, he's not... He hasn't won yet. He's just almost won. And when I say almost, I mean a Plasma Cruise Missile just got sent over to attack Jericho main, which will be quite effective when, when it hits in the past. Jericho, realizing this is happening, he's, that's going to be a pretty bad position. So yeah, that is possibly an issue. It looks like, yeah, there's a giant red spike there. That would be the PCM hitting. So right now, Jericho is trying to figure out where Vikran is, and Vikran is getting a far, is getting a Seppi from his Arcticus. He could get a Faro as well and start rebuilding. Now Vikran, of course... Oh, crap. No, Vikran is actually, yeah, he's attacking with the Octos in the past. And that's, <laughs> yeah, he's definitely trying to permaclone his Octos, and he's doing a pretty good job of it at this point, too. So the Faropod looks like it is going to be able to come back and actually damage the Far or the Octos, stop them completely. But the problem is that there isn't, like, there isn't a whole lot that Jericho can do if he's not going to attack where the Triad is. So now Vikran actually, at the 11th or team mark, Vikran actually has a Triad again. He does have a try, he does have Octos coming up, so Vikran's back in this game. He is, he's not lost, he's far from lost. Jericho really kind of dropped the ball in this one, because he won. I mean, Jericho won this game. He just didn't completely solidify that victory and didn't destroy the Arcus, didn't completely obliterate Vikran's means of rebuilding. However, he did obliterate what Vikran had for an armed forces at that point, so Vikran will have to make use, probably will make use of Chrono Boarding from this point as well. To get the units from the Arcticus back, but Jericho doesn't know where that Arcticus is and doesn't seem to be looking very hard. No, it does not appear he's not sending any units to the Arcticus, he's sending units to the main base trying to destroy it, trying to destroy the RPs that are there. Vikran, on the other hand, is. He's continuing to build up in that triad. He has, like I said, he has it pretty well set up. The dome isn't anywhere nearby to actually start attacking it. The other. The domes that are flying along are. This dome will be moving towards this spot here right next to the Triad, so we'll be able to see that Triad eventually. However, the Autos are already in hitting the actual expansion, so Jericho, like I said, he still has an advantage, he still has a great spot. And these Autos, these Autos here are going to be 
Now they're going straight out. They're going to be destroyed pretty quickly. The Farapod... I mean, obviously, they can't fight back against the Farapod. But Vikarin is still in a position... Jericho does not know where he is. He knows that he's somewhere, but he does not know where that somewhere is. And also, the dome is being attacked. It is landing. It won't be able to land and probably kill... No, will not be able to kill these guys in time. That dome has been destroyed, so Jericoon may be on the back foot again. His far pods are out of position. They are going towards the main base where it really doesn't matter. Vikarin has the resources he needs. More than the resources he needs. All he needs to do is get this base blast triad inside, and Jericoon is in a very bad spot as it is. Trying to hold this off, he will not be able to do so. He is over Chrono pointing back. A far pod to attack that triad. He will... He might be able to actually just get rid of this... Try it before it's able to do anything meaningful, though. And that will be very important. If that far pod dies, if the far pod cannot be corner for it back for whatever reason, it's going to be very bad. It looks like this might actually be the case. The far pod may, in fact, end up being unable to corner for for some reason. I do not see the corner for departure on the timeline. I only see the arrival, and that's not a good sign. Because that far pod is very important. If that does not succeed in killing Vikran's forces, Vikran will be winning from his, this point. And we're seeing from Vikram's point of view, he does actually... Oh, it has lost the triad. He has not managed to keep it alive. But he is... There's another PCN coming in. And it's going straight from the main base. Over J-Raccoon is... Well, J-Raccoon is holding off. He's double-checking the past. Nothing really bad happening. But like I said, this Chronoport... This is the problem. This Chronoport has been aborted. I don't know what happened with J-Raccoon. Why he didn't ultimately Chronoport. But that Chronoport is absolutely necessary. I don't know where... This far is just hanging out here. It's not chronoporting, and I don't know why. That is very bad because this is not causally stable. This Arcticus and Triad will come back into existence once the red time wave comes along, and Vikarin is probably well aware of that. Like I said, I don't know what happened to the far pod, why it didn't ultimately attack that. It's. I just find it very bizarre. I don't see where. I don't see what happened. Jericoon must have aborted because that far pod was never threatened. It's off in the, it's off in the middle of nowhere right now. There's no reason why I'd be threatened. Although it looks like Jericoon has... No, Jericoon has ultimately... No, he... What is he doing? I think he's trying to permaclone the Faropod, but I don't know why. He's really putting himself into a tough position. If Jericoon... Sorry, if Vikran ever finds that Faropod, he could just destroy it and abort the entire thing, or script the entire thing. And from the looks of it, Jericoon will ultimately be losing that Faropod for nothing. There's... Because of the Chronoport departure... It happens around three minutes. It happens around here. It would happen around here compared to the arrival, about two, three minutes ahead of the arrival. And this green time wave is going to hit the arrival, and then the departure is going to get hit by the blue time wave, and it's not going to permaclone. And I really don't understand what Jericho's rationale was, why he's so desperate to permaclone this, because as, as it stands, Vikarin's in a really great position. The 56 mark, he has all of his units coming up, destroying everything, but Jericho, for some reason, does not did not want to actually make that chronoport stick and i just i'm sorry it's really it's frustrating me because that is very important that was the key for him winning was to have that chronoport stick and it looks like ultimately it won't ultimately jerrican's chronoport did not happen for that for this far pod right here it happens at this point in the future but it ultimately did not happen the blue time wave carries that it happened and the red time wave carries that it didn't but the green time wave ultimately carries that it did not happen and Actually, even the blue time wave, not enough has changed. So yeah, Vikarin managed to get back, but really, j Raccoon's just thrown the game away. I mean, not just the fact that he forgot where, or didn't forgot to look for Vikarin's Arcticus and didn't stop it before it could rebuild, but the fact that his value, his successful attempt at stopping it was ultimately unsuccessful for no good reason. I mean, it's too late now. I'm sorry, it really is too late now for Vikarin... Sorry, for Vikarin to be stopped, really. I mean, j Raccoon might be able to damage that triad and deal with it a bit better, but really, this is a very bad spot, There's and there's no excuse for it. I don't know why Vikarin was allowed to do this. I, I, I just don't get it. I really don't. I, I don't get what Jay Raccoon's rationale was. I don't get what he was trying to do, if he was playing mind games or what, or if he's just gotten in the habit of paradoxing out. Yeah, once again, see, I, mean, I don't think that... I think this Chrono Report will be able to hit the edge of the timeline first, but really, there's no point Chrono cloning unless you absolutely need to have the extra units. And right now, yeah, Jericoon does absolutely need to have the extra units, but that's only because he got careless. I mean, really, he didn't need to have them, ultimately. He just... He just went and got them, even though... Or went to Chrono Clone, and like I said, he lost... He lost out his big opportunity to win the game from trying to clone a Chrono Clone. There's, there's really no point to that. <sighs> it's a bit of a rant, I suppose, but... 
Yeah, chrono cloning, or sorry, perma cloning, I should say, while useful, and in case you're wondering, I should probably explain. Perma cloning, or permanent chrono cloning, like, chrono cloning is what happens when you chrono port something back and it exists alongside itself. This is a standard time travel, a standard element of time travel. Perma cloning is taking advantage of the property of the engine that everything that falls off the left edge of the timeline here is permanent. So what you can do is you have a chrono port depart. And then it arrives on the timeline. Both events are on the timeline. You take the chronoport departure off the timeline, but the chronoport arrival stays in the timeline until it falls off the edge of the timeline. If you do that, then the unit has been permanently chronoported back, but it came out of nowhere. It's basically an ontological paradox. It just it chronoported in, but no unit chronoported back to become it. And it allows you to duplicate your units for a relatively low cost. The problem is that it's also not it's also really tricky to get right and requires a lot of attention, especially in this case where Vic, it's a very clutch game, and Vikram basically won because Jay Raccoon was dicking around trying to chrono clone, or trying to perma clone. For no good reason, really. Vikram just threw, the, or so Vikram just got this game because Jay Raccoon threw it away, essentially. Which is really annoying because Jay Raccoon had, Jay Raccoon was winning this game. It was his game to win. I mean, the fact that he got careless when he thought that Vikram had died after that first rush was pretty bad, but the fact that he tried to get fancy and lost. I, you only get fancy when you have to get fancy. If it's get fancy or lose, then you get fancy. If it's do something that'll make you win or get fancy, where getting fancy may allow you, may cause you to lose, then just try to win. Like The whole point of anything fancy in a game, like any game, is that someone else had to do something fancy to stop you, and then you have to do something fancier to stop them, which occasionally happens, and pretty common in RTS to happen where the strategies just evolve against each other. But if you're doing something just for the sake of being fancy, that's a waste of time. Do something because it's going to cause you to win. If the game, if not being fancy causes you to win, if there's no strategy that's really interesting that causes you to win, then there's an issue with, that you need to use, ultimately, at the optimal metagame. That's more of an issue with the game which can be patched out and modified and worked around. But if being fancy is necessary to win, then do it. If it's not necessary to win, then don't. So it looks like Jaragoon has pretty much lost the game. There's He has nothing left. He has, in the playable past, as we can see here on the left side of the playable past, he has nothing. Quite literally. He has the dome. That's about it. But it's just, it's kind of weird to see that he had won. Jaragoon had won this game. And he decided to win. Yeah, I say, he thought you were outside. Wasted time. Bad idea. Do not waste time. Never waste time. Wasting time is not the way to play. And he, if you're going to waste time, then don't expect to win. <laughs> so, yeah, that was interesting, but kind of frustrating, ultimately. Yeah, that. I don't know. A good demonstration about why you don't do something fancy for the sake of being fancy. You do something fancy because your opponent is doing something that requires you to do something fancy in order to win. And Jericoon did not need to be fancy in that instance. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. It was enlightening. And have a good night, everyone.